nearly a year after New York City became the epicenter of the nation's coronavirus crisis, we're getting extraordinary access to the ongoing fight to save lives. This morning, we're following up with two doctors who shared the emotional toll inside the hospital in video diaries early in the pandemic. Now, Mount Sinai is allowing cameras inside its ER and its ICU, too, for the first time. Mola Lange shows us the progress and continuing peril of a year on the COVID front lines. I think he's about to crash. Yeah. Because of his sepsis? Yeah, the sepsis and the respiratory status is worse. Yeah, yeah. Dr. Umesh Gidwani is fighting to save a critical COVID patient who has been at Mount Sinai Hospital for over 60 days. We started what is called ECMO, which is a lung support therapy. It's a desperate last-ditch attempt. It's a shame. He's so young. It's terrible. The somber responsibility to update the family in a video chat remotely. Do you think they understand how sick he is? Yeah. You do? Yeah, they think he's not going to make it. They don't. Families unable to comfort their loved one, a cruel symptom of the pandemic. It caused a lot of heartache not only to the families, but also to us who are taking care of the patient. There is still quite a substantial burden of illness and uh, severity of multi-organ failure. In April, Gidwani recorded video diaries to share what battling COVID-19 from the front lines both looks and feels like. What could we have done better? What could we have done different? Could we have saved another life? The things that I see in the ER are scary. Um, I'm a little scared myself. Joining in the fight to save another life, Dr. Matthew Bai, a physician at the emergency department in Mount Sinai, Queens. He also shared the emotional toll. This morning when I left the house, I said goodbye uh, to my wife uh, and my daughter for who knows how long. Bai captured the difficult decision to isolate from his family at the peak of New York's outbreak. Do you remember where you were mentally, emotionally as you were recording those things? Um, it's fuzzy. I was stressed. There was times of sadness. I felt lonely. There's patients everywhere. We're trying our best to treat everyone that we can. We followed by on one of his shifts to see the impact fighting COVID-19 had one year later. Usually patients get to bed pretty quickly, but since COVID started, it's been taking hours, sometimes even days. And so even though we've sort of seen numbers fall, we're still seeing your hospital capacity. Yeah, even though the numbers are down, it's still high enough to keep all of our hospitals pretty much at like 95% plus capacity. If I walk into a certain room where something really devastating happened during the peak, I still get like a little flash of like chills and I can feel my heart rate going up a little bit. I would imagine it's almost like a trauma. Y yeah, yeah, that's a good way to describe it. A survey conducted by Mental Health America found increasing numbers of anxiety, depression, loneliness, and other mental health concerns among healthcare workers faced with combating the virus. But in a year of devastating lows, there were also highs. My wife just sent me this picture from the park. First swing ride of her life. <laughs> After six weeks separated from his family, the Bais reunited. In August, Bai's wife gave birth to another girl. In the middle of a tough day, like if my wife sends me a picture like that, I'll look at it and just makes everything so much better. Things are looking worse back on Dr. Gidwani's floor. A desperate attempt underway to save this young patient's life. The doctors are going to put a test tube in. There's one of the worst parts of this pandemic is how people have to die separated from their loved ones. Never alone, never alone. Our nurses, our doctors are always there, always at the bedside. A year by the bedside, bearing trauma hidden beneath layers of PPE. For CBS This Morning, Mola Lange, New York. Well, I remember, guys, when Tara Narula first brought this to our attention, attention last yeah. year. And I remember yeah. being surprised because you think they're doing their job, yeah. they want to be there, which of course they do. But I hadn't thought about the emotional and physical and psychological toll oh, that they're it takes human. On them. They're, yeah. He said he walks in certain rooms yeah. and it chills. Come back yeah, to yeah him. it comes back to him. Yeah. Yeah, even yeah. the helpers need help. I can yeah. totally imagine that because those, yeah. I mean, those weeks, what were we, six weeks six away, weeks away, from, away from, from his family, family yeah. where things were so intense.